REITs have been known to be a good dividend paying instrument and what I'm seeing on the ground is that REIT prices seem to be picking up. So the million dollar question is, are REITs going on a big bull run or not? Today we'll have that discussion. On top of that, I'll be throwing in my personal rating to the various categories of REITs. So if you're curious to find out on it, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. REITs stand for Real Estate Investment Trust. And in Singapore, there is a vibrant market involving all kinds of REITs. There is hospitality REITs, there is office REITs, there are also retail mall REITs. So today, I'll show you a full breakdown using the IHS REIT Leaders Index. This index over here shows which are the biggest cap REITs in Singapore. And as you can see, the smallest one is actually hotel and motel equity REITs. If I'm not wrong, that is where CDL Hospitality Trust sits in. Up next, you'll see Apartment Equity REITs. Quite possibly, Escort REIT is in that space. Escort REIT is a REIT that I've covered before on this channel. Then moving up the list, we'll see that Healthcare REITs also exist. And one name to suggest to you is actually Parkway Life REIT. Now, Parkway Life REIT, I have a personal story. I had an investment in it very long time ago, and I've actually sold out that position. But if you look at Parkway Life REIT, you realize that you ran on a multi-year bull run. So as always, when you invest, invest for the long term. It is one that got away from me. So I'm always looking to see if uh, one day you would come back down to something that I find more attractive or not. Moving up the list, we'll see something called Retail Equity REIT. And this category is actually on REITs that purchase malls. Now, if you're looking for an investment that's fully into malls, you can actually check out Fraser Centerpoint Trust. They own malls such as Causeway Point, North Point, and these malls have been performing well because, you know, as we have done COVID-19 relaxation, there's been increase in traffic at these malls. But if you're looking for a hybrid, today we'll discuss a bit more on two REITs that not only own retail space, but also office space. And these two names are actually CICT, which is Capital Integrated Commercial Trust, and Suntech REIT. Let's deep dive firstly into CICT. As we can see in their announcements, CICT has been actually expanding into Australia. They have purchased 101 to 103 Miller Street and Greenwood Plaza. They have also purchased 66 Goulburn Street and 100 Arthur Street. So this whole acquisition has actually cost them 1.1 billion Sing dollars worth. And when I look into the books, this would be about 4 to 5 percent of their total AUM. CICT has actually divested some offices, which is 1 George Street, but they've also made a new purchase, which is the 79 Robinson Road very recently. This transaction is $1.26 billion. It's also worth noting that CICT has divested J Cube away. They've sold it back to their parent company, Capital Land. So the quick observation is CICT is selling a bit of malls and buying Singapore offices and also Australian offices. So the weightage towards officers seem a bit bigger than ever. Then the question leads to, is there a problem with malls or not? Is e-commerce destroying the business of malls, especially REITs who own shopping malls? Let me show you some interesting findings. What can we see in this Singapore sales performance chart? You realize that the online sale seems to be dropping, correct? Ever since November 2021. It could be dropping for a few reasons, and my best guess is that the physical retail sales have been picking up. That's why the percentage for online sales seem to be dropping. But this chart really proves that online sales will not totally replace physical retail sales. In Singapore, we still like going to the malls to have a good meal, to really chill and relax and spend time with the family. And we will not buy everything from the online space. This is further proven by rent. If you look at this data, you realize that suburban rent has been steady, correct? That is the orange line over there. The average is about $30 PSF. I actually shared before that I owned an ice cream shop before and that lease was with SMRT. I did actually pay about $30 back then. So a 300 plus square feet actually cost me 10 k in terms of rent. So if I'm new to F&B space, on the first floor is really that expensive. CICT has also shared that they have seen certain easing in terms of the rental rate. But the key part is this rental revision downwards seems to be subsiding. Quite possibly as we open up, they will eventually start rising in my opinion. So I'm fairly bullish on the retail space. 
There's a further point to add. If we see this data over here, you realize that Singapore's private retail floor space per capita is actually quite low as compared to London, Hong Kong, and Bangkok. How I interpret this data is that perhaps in Singapore, there is room to build even more quality malls. I use the word quality because if it's a mall that is not in MRT station, we've seen a few fail before, some in Murray Parade, some in Alexandra area. These malls are not well connected. But if you look in terms of malls with an MRT line below it, like Plaza Singh, like 300 Somerset, like Bugis Junction, you realize that the traffic is strong. But the question still sits, why is CICT buying more offices? And there's always this lingering worry that as we do more work from home, office space is just going to be useless in future. If you are concerned about that, let me show you some data. This is grade A office rent measured on a quarterly basis. What do you see in the chart? There are periods of ups and downs, correct? Where there's supply and demand fluctuation. But what we can see is that rent for grade A offices are generally stable. And quite recently, in the last two quarters, it has actually been trending upwards. Take note also, this is fourth quarter 2021. And as for CICT, they have actually shared that their occupancy rate for offices stands at 91.5%. And that's actually below the average in CBD, which is 93.3%. Suntech Read, on the other hand, registers a slightly better occupancy rate at this moment. And that's why I kind of prefer Suntech Read slightly above CICT. There's a further reason why also. If you see what Suntech Read actually owns, they have the Suntech Convention Center, correct? There's usually baby fair, car fair, bridal fair over there. And with the easing of COVID-19 rules, we should expect there should be more conventions coming up in the next few months ahead. And Suntech Read, in my opinion, can benefit because they derive certain revenue from their convention center. If you track performances, you realize that that used to bring 13 to 18 million dollars in terms of net property income and when people go to convention centers they also spend money in the malls correct and i do believe that suntech mall might see even better traffic moving forward but again that's my guess and my interpretation on what the value of the shares are for these two excellent reads and the best part is if you don't have time it's actually much better to invest into a basket of reads then you don't need really track on operational performance which is doing better which is not doing so well and when you buy a whole basket, you get a key benefit, which is diversification. This video is sponsored by Scythe, and they actually have a product, which is called a Scythe Read Plus, that buys into the s -read IH Leaders Index. This is the current constituents list. And what do you see? For the top three, they are CICT, Ascenders, and Maple Tree Logistics Trust. These three are all thermasic linked. Even number four, which is Keppel DC Read. Keppel DC's parent company is Keppel, which is also affiliated to Temasek. Number 5 and number 6 are both Maple Tree linked also. And number 7 is of course Suntec Read, which I've mentioned favorably. There's another part that I like about the Scythe Read Plus portfolio. What we can see is the data center allocation is slightly bigger than before. What I'd like to highlight are three reads in particular that have data center assets Ascenders, Kappa DC Read, as well as Maple Tree Industrial Trust. These three in combination hold a weight of about 38% in the portfolio. And if data centers were to start picking up again, I think the portfolio would benefit massively. Then your next question might be, might as well you just buy the reads that I mentioned favorably today. But if you see what Scythe Read Plus can actually deliver in terms of value proposition, you realize that they help you participate in corporate actions. Myself, I have Maple Tree Industrial Trust, and I had to manually go and do the subscription. But within my own Scythe Read Plus portfolio, I've noticed that they've taken care of that corporate action automatically. If you want to check it out next time, simply go to transactions and start filtering for rights issue. You realize that if you have many reads, there are actually many corporate actions that you need to do. In addition, the filter also allows you to see the dividends that you have received from each individual read itself. So quite easily, this is a portfolio that gives you Singapore's best reads and also does a lot of the heavy lifting that is needed to be an investor. So back to a question I started this video with. Are we in a bull market for Singapore REITs? I believe it's a bit too early to tell for sure. But I would argue also that Singapore REITs are definitely looking cheap. If you see this 5-year chart, you realize that right now the price is slightly below 
pre-pandemic prices, correct? And if you look in terms of the one-year chart, right now the price is even cheaper than in August 2021, where we haven't even had this easing process and fully opened up yet. The current situation for retail space is definitely more favorable than before. The current situation for office space looks the same, especially when we move into a more normalized world. So thank you for watching to here. Let me know your questions in the sections below. And as an ending point, I have this to share. I feel many young investors are underinvested into real estate simply because they prefer technology. On the other hand, many older investors are overinvested into banks. REITs hold a sweet spot whereby it can produce dividends and is an asset class that has a fantastic track record. And if you're new to SIFE, look for my referral codes below, Astute Parent, and I wish you all the best in your investment journey. If that was enough from here, and see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.